Now let's see aneurysm of the left ventricle as the complication of myocardial infarction. For the diagnosis of left ventricular aneurysm, we have to pay attention to three signs. The first, local dilation, in this case here, of the apical left ventricle. Then it, the wall has to be very thin and fibrotic. And you can see here that an area that is large suddenly becomes thinner. That means that this area here is the neck of the aneurysm. So dilation, fibrosis, the neck, sudden thinning of the wall here. How the wall gets thinner suddenly. This is the neck of the aneurysm. The other necessary condition is that the wall of the aneurysm uh, must be dyskinetic. It has to move outside because it shouldn't have viable myocardium in the aneurysm. And so the presence of a thin and dyskinetic wall means it's really fibrotic. So just to remind, uh, for an aneurysm, we got to have dilation, fibrosis, a wall that is disconnected. And it is very important that we can find the neck, the part where the thickened area becomes thin. Here we have another example, apical long axial. Uh, there's an aneurysm in here. You see here, here there is a thinning of that wall and fibrotic, and it was dyskinetic. Here is another example. It can involve any wall of the left ventricle. Here in the posterior wall, posterior lateral wall, big aneurysm with a thrombus inside. Here's the thrombus. Here is the wall, thin, and it was dyskinetic. So it's a fibrotic wall. And you can see here the neck is a large neck. It can be in any place. This other patient here has in the lateral wall. And in the lateral wall, uh, it was fibrotic also and this kinetic too. So perfect aneurysm of the lateral wall is a large neck. Another case, there is a microbubble contrast here. You better see the endocardium. See here the septum, I the septum, and uh, the anterior wall. It's uh, fibrotic. It is really dyskinetic. So it seems to be aneurysm. In this long X, we see the beginning of the neck here and uh, all the fibrosis of the anterior septum characterizing the aneurysm of this anteroseptal apical wall. Here, a real big aneurysm. It involves more than two-thirds of the left ventricle. We see the beginning of the neck here. wall gets thinner. It is kinetic during systole. It's really big. One more case, apical four chamber view. We can see here that the apex of the left ventricle, I would say half to one-third apical of the left ventricle has an aneurysm. It is dyskinetic. You can see it's dyskinetic. We see the beginning of the neck here, and it's uh, fibrotic, no doubts about that. It's very thin and bright, so it's fibrotic. This is the area here of the neck of the aneurysm. See how the depth of the aneurysm is large compared with the neck size. Another view of the same aneurysm. So because the long X view, look at the dilatation and systolic expansion of the aneurysm here. Another example involving the one third to half of the inferior wall of the left ventricle. You see that the wall here is very thin. So it's fibrotic, it's kinetic, it expands during systole. In this case here, we can see that there is fibrosis in this area of anterior septum. It's fibrotic because it's thin and brighter than the, the usual wall. The remaining wall seems to be contracting well. Even though this here is fibrotic, we cannot say it's an aneurysm. Yet. In this four chamber, the apex is dilated, very dilated. It's dyskinetic. The wall is pretty much thinner than the others, but I don't really see a neck. Most of the people would call, at this time, would call this an aneurysm already. It might as well be, but I rather have a complete findings. And one of these findings lacking here is the 
sudden thinning of the wall, showing that's a place for the neck of the aneurysm. In this long X apical view, we can really see here what seems to be a neck of the aneurysm. It looks like this wall here gets thinner. But in this apical, four chamber and long X, we see here a perfect neck from here to here. See how it gets thinner over there. And the aneurysm here is much smaller than it seemed in the upper view. You do have to look in several views. Here, it looks like it's much bigger than we are seeing here. The reason is because we're seeing the neck here, but uh, we don't see the neck in this view here. So we really don't know where the aneurysm starts. When you see the neck, you're sure what where it starts, and then you are sure about its size. So look for the neck, and then size up the aneurysm. You're going to be with a better evaluation. When reporting the size of the aneurysm, I'd rather say it takes uh, one-third of the apical left ventricle, two-thirds, or half of the apical left ventricle, or one-third of the lateral wall, think like that, rather than uh, give any any number in percentage as this situation in here. The other way to do it is to take an orthogonal view of the left ventricle, like uh, in the fourth chamber and uh, a long X view of the left ventricle showing the aneurysm. And then you would size the the whole left ventricle and measure also uh, the normal walls uh, to uh, to the neck of the aneurysm. So you measure here to the neck, uh, the septum to the neck here. So this, and then you the lateral wall from here to the neck also, and then you will measure the normal normal posterior lateral wall to the neck and the septum, the anterior septum to the neck. Then you just uh, sum up the values that you got of the normal wall uh, and uh, divide by four. So you have the the mean size of the normal walls, and uh, then you see the percentage of these normal walls in relation to the length of the left ventricle. Then you see what is the percentual size of the aneurysm.